stupid. No. Happy Friday. I sincerely hope you're excited for your three-day weekend. I know I am. This is what I did last year. Yeah. My memories. So, whenever a huge, ugly story unfolds, the media has to do its thing. And like Brian Stelter at a pie-eating contest, they never seem to know when to quit. So you sold an AR-15 at the gun show? See you in court. Does your neighbor have a big arsenal? Stop saying that. I'm not saying anything. It's natural, after a tragedy, I suppose, to report and report. It's necessary. But then, what if there's not enough news to do more reporting? Well, then you repeat it and repeat it again. It's like that Cars for Kids ad that makes me want to puncture my eardrums. <laughs> I know. They really are talented, though. But it's everything but facts. You call in talking heads and experts for angles and emotional testimony. They are the hamburger helper of news, if you will, adding volume to the main course. And when the reporting runs dry, which is fast, the speculation begins. And like me calling my pharmacist, it's relentless. <laughs> it won't stop. Everyone tries to outdo each other. Am I more perceptive than you? Are you more emotionally affected than me? The news becomes as productive as an argument with a meter maid. The speculation is then punctuated by dribs and drabs of new info, which hours later turns out to be wrong. There was an officer confronting a shooter. No, there wasn't. The shooter killed himself. No, he didn't. The press used to say that if your mother says she loves you, you should check it out first. <laughs> now it's, hey, guess until you're right. Meanwhile, everyone turns into little Columbos, experts in speculation, but little else. But at least Columbo got it right in the end. But now it's, was there a delay in police action? And if so, why? Should they have gone right in or wait for others? Did they screw up? You know, it's like we could make these decisions easily. Suddenly, we're experts in tactics and say what we would have done. I know what I would have done. Hide behind Tyrus. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, then I'd offer Geraldo as a trade. <laughs> I'm kidding, Geraldo. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Hey, at least it wasn't you. He's a lovely man. Lovely man. But we play Monday morning quarterback, Monday through Friday, and then some. I find it hypocritical for media to criticize reaction time when ours is always off. It's just in the opposite direction. Just like when we watch videos of cops interacting with unarmed suspects, suddenly we became experts in policing, as though we went to school for it. But in reality, the closest we've come to studying the police is watching a documentary on Sting. <laughs> oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Away Homer. Yes. The fact is, a lot of us got journalism degrees to avoid doing math. But we can't help ourselves. It's the nature of the beast. When I was a kid, we had 30 to 60 minutes of news tops each day. Hell, that included sports, weather, and 10 minutes of birthday shout-outs to people who went to high school with God. But now it's 24-7. We went from a little bucket of news to an Olympic-sized pool that needs filling every day. It's like Tyrus's bathtub. <laughs> Whereas Rubber Ducky is an actual tugboat. You got one more. I know. You got one more. It's two. But, but me pointing this out doesn't mean it's going to change. I mean, I'm a powerful cog in this machine we call the media, but I don't have that kind of influence. I can barely get Cat to bathe. <laughs> I shower, I, I shower twice a day. Yes. <laughs> no, you didn't. But at least we should acknowledge our role in this. Right now, we just show up at the end of a crime. But that crime is often the end of a long, ugly road, featuring clues that make us wonder why we didn't see it coming. It's like terrorism. You see how you could have prevented it after it's already occurred. The problem is the bad guys watch TV news, too. So the next time, they'll do it differently, and we'll have to learn another lesson again on how to prevent that specific crime. But you see, learning on the job is one thing if you're stocking shelves at Walmart. 
But when it comes to policing, learning from mistakes usually means learning from horrific human tragedy, maybe the death of one of their own. So maybe we so-called media experts should slow down our reaction time about a subject we really know nothing about and learn to do our jobs right first before we worry about how others do theirs. Of course, single variable thinkers will scream guns after an atrocity like this, but we can handle more than one thought. There's mental instability, family disarray, bullying, a disturbing presence on social media. The ingredients in these tragedies are as consistent as the ones at a Big Mac. Yes, there are variables we should catch early. One of them, though, is us, the media. We never lower the heat to these things, even though we know they trigger copycats who see the attention as a chance for infamy and immortality. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't report these stories. Reporting is one thing, but acting as a publicist for the killer is another. The media almost turns the story into a late night infomercial, telling young mentally unstable men who might be watching that you too can be a household name. You too can go out in a blaze of glory and make history. You too can be the next creep who shall not be named. That's the reason someone chooses Suicide Plus over just suicide. Suicide Plus has a payoff provided by you know who, us. So as we criticize cops and say they should have done it better and hope they learn from it, we should also say that about the press. Too bad we won't listen. Let's welcome Period. tonight's guest. His degrees at Princeton and Oxford prove he's terrible at sports. Novelist and literary critic Walter Kerr. She shakes more foundations than the San Andreas Fault. Fox, Fox business anchor, what's wrong with me? Dagan McDowell. Her family's planning a road trip to get away from her. Fox News contributor, Cat Tim. And his chest x-rays have to be shown at the local drive-in. My massive sidekick at the NWA World Television Champion, Tyrus. All right. Walter, good to see you as always. Thank you. So, how do you improve an industry like this, in which our job is to fill space? It's not necessarily our fault. It's just that we increase the space, like, 12-fold, and now we're, like, just stuck just going over the same path over and over again. There's a question in there somewhere, Walter. By the way, you look great. Thank you, man. That's uh, not... Let's, I think we can agree that he looks great. Yeah, he does. Thank you, Kat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, let's add to the problem by having me comment on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> what do you think about the things that I'm saying you shouldn't be commenting on? Um... I, I, act, I promise to try to be funny later in the show. Yeah. But I covered a mass shooting once for a magazine mm -hmm. in Aurora, Colorado. Right. Uh, the midnight shooting at a Batman premiere. Mm -hmm. And I was there in the morning. There was still blood in the parking lot. There was still spilled popcorn from the fleeing people. And the kids of the town, whose friends had died the night before, were sitting around looking at this police taped area. And one of them had a shirt on that said, my bloody Valentine. And it had a picture of a head exploding. Mm. And I said, uh, that's a little strange to wear that shirt uh, after this terrible shooting. And he said, well, it's a band I hadn't noticed. Yeah, it is a band. It's a well, great band. Well, so the moral of this story mm -hmm. is that I don't think we notice anymore that we're absolutely saturated mm -hmm. in this violence, in this talk of shootings and shooters. We use the language as though we've all, you know, gone to the police academy. Yes. Um, and, and, and my feeling after that shooting was that the coverage is like a blanket that we throw over a body. We can't, we can't stand to look it in the eye. Mm -hmm. And so we cover it in coverage. One thing about guns is that I think we can all agree they shouldn't be in the hands of insane people. Right. Um, but the problem is we can't define insane anymore. Um, and I, I think that we could start with ourselves. We're a little insane, and we drive everybody else insane in the media. And uh, <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. Dagan, what are your thoughts? 
on my eloquent monologue that will win awards. As a journalist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing God's work. Right. Because in the last two years, I have been your virologist, epidemiologist, <laughs> economist, lawyer. I've been historian on uh, Eastern Europe, Asia, and the former Soviet Union. I've been a petroleum engineer, <laughs> a military tactician, a weapons specialist, a beautician, and when asked, Walter, if you want to look better than you do right now, an amateur dermatologist and plastic surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but real quick, nothing has changed except the saturation. Yeah. Because when I told my father, I called him on the phone when I got my first job, I said, Daddy, I'm going to be a journalist. And his response was, Oh, honey, you're really scraping the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> couldn't you? He was like, couldn't you be an IRS agent or like a repo man? <laughs> so it hadn't really changed. That's great. Uh, <laughs> it's so funny. We all have become experts. We all be. That's it's even true in in magazine journalism. You get a, if if you wrote an article in 19 like 83 on like airlines. You will end up getting called by a cable station citing you as an expert. Yes. All it takes is one article, Kat. Mm. Makes you an expert in a lot of things. Yeah. Well, okay. So I actually disagree with mm -hmm. some. I, I think it's okay for um, to be critical of the police, right. even though I couldn't do their jobs. Mm -hmm. Because part of the reason that I don't do that job is that I know I couldn't do it. So mm -hmm. the people who do have that job. I think that this should be investigated, and if you know these were these massive mistakes were made this way that they are talking about, people should be held accountable. I agree, and I think that that's fine to say. What starts to bother me is when there is all of this time to talk about the story, and everybody wants to sort of hot take out each other, right? Where it's like someone calls it horrible, mm -hmm. and then someone else says, "No, no, 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 it was unfathomable," mm -hmm. and then it just becomes like a vocabulary showdown, right? <laughs> it's like, yes, what are we doing here? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I, obviously, the families aren't watching these shows right now. No. They're like, you know, but it's like I'm always trying to think, like, what if they accidentally did? How would they feel seeing their kids up there? on TV, how would they feel about seeing their kids up there while they have a picture of the killer? Right. Which has happened on like, you know, in, in certain newspapers, they'll have the, the guy all over the place. And it's like, I don't, do the parents even wanna see that? Anyway, that's not a question. I just wanna hand it over to you, Tyrus, for the final thought. Well, first of all, you, you again, you said it right the other day. Sometimes we just need to shut the hell up. Yeah. Um, of course, mistakes were made. He was able to get into school and kill mm -hmm. children and two teachers. And the people who made those mistakes are going to have to live with that for the rest of their life. The teacher who le left the door open mm -hmm. is paying for that. The, the two police officers that were shot off, the cops that were trying to figure out what was happening. In real time, every second mm -hmm. that they're trying to figure out, a gun bullet's going off. A gun's bullet going off. And then you see people sitting in chairs like this telling them what they did wrong. How right. dare you? Yeah. Mistakes were made. Officers have to live with that. One of the officers lost his own child. You don't think he's got, that's not going to live with him? Yeah. Mistakes were made. Of course they were. But let's not forget who's responsible. Mm -hmm. The murderer is. He had time to plan. He had support. He had finance. He watched. He waited. He had the advantage. And it's a simple thing. And I'm not a genius, and I don't tr pretend to be one, but I'm a parent, and I was a bodyguard, and my job was to keep Snoop safe. I always planned for a problem. And it goes to Mr. Kern's point, until you start looking in the mirror and start saying that we have bad people, we have evil people, we have monsters in every town and every city, and we need to plan accordingly, then we can do that. But until then, we'll have roundtables like this and all these geniuses on TV, and I go back to your awesome point, and you had the balls to say it, sometimes we need to shut the hell up. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.